Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a storm that's about to get even larger across the eastern tier of the United States. This particular storm is going to bring even more problems over the next 24 hours, and this includes a little bit more severe weather this late morning into the early afternoon hours, in addition to the potential for up to three feet of snow in some areas across parts of the Midwest and as well as the Northeast. In addition to this, we have another large storm that'll be coming to the United States by the weekend, and this will bring another risk of severe weather to the Great Plains, and this could even impact areas further to the east as we go later into the weekend and into early next week. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown of everything that you need to know in this forecast, and let's first begin with what's happening right now in the United States today with this particularly large storm that's on the east coast of the country, and right now we have a large and strong low pressure system, which this is currently located near Wisconsin and Illinois and notice what's interesting about this is that we have a massive dry slot feeding into this low pressure system lots of snow though on the western and northern side of this particular storm and that's going to lead to a lot of snow in parts of the Midwest and as well as even back into parts of northern Michigan throughout the rest of this morning and as well as into the early afternoon hours which some areas in the upper Michigan Peninsula could see as much as three feet of snow which is insane and even areas in the northeast will see as much as two to three feet of snow in the higher elevations it's going to get really crazy over the next 24 hours back over on the east coast though we are also watching for showers and thunderstorms and another tornado risk for today in areas like north carolina virginia back even into florida we'll be watching for the threat of a few tornadoes today which will be pretty interesting and i'll be talking about more details on that here in just a second once we go later into tonight that severe weather threat is done so we're basically talking about that threat between now up until about four to five o'clock this afternoon what we'll have to watch for as we go into tonight and tomorrow morning though is is the potential for a very large winter storm and we are going to have dueling low pressure systems something that you really do not see very often especially in april where we have one low pressure system which is our main one it'll kind of weaken out and fizzle out back over in the midwest but on the flip side of things another low pressure system is going to develop off the coast of new england and this is going to turn into a large winter storm across the northeast feeding lots of moisture and energy back into the northeast leading to a significant winter storm across northern new england and as well as back into New York, where many areas will see as much as two feet of snow. And by the time we go into Friday, most of that snow pushes offshore, with only a few light snow showers remaining by the time we go into Friday afternoon. We'll be talking about specific details on timing with this winter storm, in addition to snowfall accumulation here in just a couple of minutes. But I do want to talk more about that severe weather potential, which is going to be ongoing here over the next several hours across the East Coast and as well as back into the Southeast. And notice going into the late morning, this is right around about 11 to 12 o'clock, we're going to have an elevated tornado risk across areas in eastern Virginia and as well as eastern North Carolina where a couple of tornadoes will be possible. What we're looking at here is the significant tornado parameter. It gives us an idea of where we'll be looking at the greatest tornado risk and that's really where we're looking for today is going to be in eastern Virginia and as well as eastern North Carolina and really when I expect the greatest tornado risk today from, will be from about 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m. and this will be primarily in Virginia and North Carolina but I'm not ruling out some sort of brief tornado threat back down maybe in southern Maryland right around about three four five o'clock this afternoon so just keep that in mind after about six or seven o'clock we are definitely done with this tornado threat so obviously make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts today and have a tornado action plan in place and guess what there's also a tornado risk back down in Florida today this is at 9 a.m and notice the values here will be in a ballpark of zero to two so that means that there's a low to very low tornado risk here today I do think overall the tornado risk is much lower back down in central and northern Florida comparatively to North Carolina and as well as Virginia. With that being said, don't rule out an isolated tornado or two across parts of central and northern Florida. By 1 to 2 o'clock, the main tornado risk will be in central Florida. And after that, the tornado risk should be near zero as we go later into the afternoon and as well as into the evening hours. So for the timing, across areas like Virginia and North Carolina, there will be showers and storms this morning. If the environment is able to recover quick enough, which is a problem that we had yesterday in parts of western Ohio, this is something I'll have to watch for closely is a development of an isolated tornado risk. Really, what we're going to be watching for are any supercells that try to develop. They'll be pretty much low-top supercells, but if we get any of these supercells going, they will be capable of damaging winds and perhaps an isolated tornado risk. Watch in the Richmond area between lunchtime and 4 p.m. That'll be your main time frame to watch for. By 4 p.m., a better shot there for tornadoes will exist across areas from Greenville and Jacksonville back into Virginia Beach, and eventually as we get closer to about 5 o'clock or so, those storms are moving to the east toward Virginia Beach and Southern Maryland, 
and maybe an isolated storm back over in eastern North Carolina before we're done with that severe weather threat. For those in anywhere in South Carolina and Georgia, your severe weather threat is winding down over the next few hours. We are done by lunchtime, so nothing really too much more to be concerned about other than damaging winds and perhaps a brief tornado. And then back down in Florida, severe weather will be possible this afternoon, but primarily in the morning hours, we're going to be watching for some showers and thunderstorms near Gainesville and Jacksonville. This will all move towards Daytona Beach, Orlando, and Tampa by 1. By 2 to 3 o'clock, those storms are moving right through central Florida with damaging winds, heavy rainfall, and perhaps a lot of lightning and maybe a brief tornado. And by 5 to 6 o'clock, storms are moving further down to the south and east where that tornado threat will really go down near zero by that point. By the way, the severe weather will not be done by then. By the end of this video, we will be talking about the threat of severe weather across the Great Plains this weekend, which is going to be an upcoming threat, and that could also impact areas in the Midwest and the Southeast. But let's talk more about that winter storm threat that's impacting areas like the Midwest and will eventually impact areas in the Northeast as we go th further into the day today. Notice right now we do have some light to moderate snow falling across Wisconsin, and even those in Chicago. For those who are in Chicago right now, let me know if you're seeing snow out there in the comments below. There is some snow falling in the vicinity though for sure light to moderate snow will continue throughout the morning this morning once we get closer to lunchtime moderate to heavy snow is going to continue in the michigan peninsula where we are going to be talking about the potential for as much as three feet of snow in a couple of locations up there meanwhile most of the snow near chicago and as well as in wisconsin will be light to moderate all the way through lunchtime by the time we go into late afternoon hours this snow is really beginning to wind down with the only snow remaining being lake effect snow across areas like michigan and the upper michigan peninsula by thursday morning the only Thing left will be a few passing light snow showers and that's really about it by then in terms of snowfall accumulation you might be surprised with some of these areas even areas in ohio and indiana you'll have a chance for some flurries maybe a coating to an inch of snow after we just saw a tornado outbreak yesterday so be mindful of that that's going to be possible going into thursday morning but more than anything really the main area that you'd be wanting to watch for is back up here in the upper michigan peninsula where we could see some spots near two to three feet of snow in a very small sliver there of the upper michigan peninsula even near Green Bay watching for four to eight inches of snow and back near the Chicago suburbs most of those areas will be between a coating to a few inches of snowfall keep in mind this snowfall does include what we've already seen during the early morning hours so this goes from about that point all the way through tomorrow so again a lot of snow is ahead in those areas but another area that's going to see even more widespread significant snow is the northeast and this will really ramp up this afternoon a snow will start in areas like the higher elevations of Vermont and New Hampshire but it's really going to get heavy by the time we go into the late evening tonight in into the overnight hours where heavy snowfall will be possible across northern Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont. Even areas in New York will get in on the fun with all that snowfall. School cancellations look likely across northern New England as some significant snowfalls ahead between tonight all the way through tomorrow afternoon and evening. Snow will start to wind down though as we go into Thursday night with some snow still remaining in the higher elevations of New Hampshire back up near Mount Washington for example and eventually as we go into Friday morning any snow that's left over will be overall fairly light. Now in terms of snowfall accumulation i agree with a lot of this with, with what the h triple r model is saying i do think many areas will see between one to two feet of snow in areas like northern new hampshire uh, anywhere in that purple color that you can see here that'll be anywhere from one to two feet of snow again that includes almost all of new hampshire and much of maine as well so be prepared for that if you're anywhere around along this border here just north of boston i am expecting several inches of snow here i don't know if we'll get to 10 inches in like haverhill for example but i'm at least expecting four to eight inches of snow in that area so be mindful of that uh, but overall very sharp sharp divide obviously between zero inches of snow and perhaps even a foot of snow in parts of Massachusetts so if you're in Massachusetts New Hampshire or Maine have fun this weekend and as well as this week with all that snow that'll be on the ground it probably will not melt at least for a few days that is a lot of snow that's going to be falling there all right last thing I want to talk about is the severe weather threat as we go into the weekend we will have another large-scale low pressure system move into the Great Plains as of now there is going to likely at least be some level of severe weather in the central and southern plains from Kansas back into Texas and Oklahoma as of now, it remains unlikely that we'll see severe weather in the Midwest and back into the Mississippi Valley, but I'm not ruling it out quite yet. Well, it really depends on the evolution of this low pressure system. When I do think there'll be a much better shot of severe weather, it'll be the middle and end of next week, where we could get another large scale low pressure system developing in the Southern and Central Plains, but we'll save that for a future forecast once there's a bit more certainty there. Big problems though right now with the Saturday setup is that we will not have a whole lot of moisture, so that means the severe weather threat should remain lower than what 
we just saw yesterday, we should be looking at a slight, at most, an enhanced risk for like large hail or damaging winds. That's really the main concern. Dew points will be in the low to mid 50s. Some areas in Texas might get to the low 60s. I would say if there's any significant severe weather threat, it would probably be held in Texas. In addition to this, the instability is going to be very low going into Saturday evening. We're going to be talking about values that are very low overall between 100 to 1,000 joules per kilogram. Not very impressive. The one thing that might help this event, though, would be the low-level jet. This could be cranking. The problem will be that it's going to be more of a southerly flow and not nearly as much of a southwesterly flow. So I do think there's some problems with the setup, but stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest as we get closer to this next severe weather event. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.